What's up everybody, Pumpkin here. So yesterday we did four cards, today we have nine cards. So they did an extra three cards today from yesterday. So that's kind of cool. Uh, this video is gonna be a tad bit longer. Uh, but yeah, let's hop right into these nine cards. First card we have is nine provisions, five strength, profit one, order, damage a unit by one, horde six, damage it by two instead, cooldown one, reach two. Uh, so similar card is Gabor and Squaytel, which is five strength, eight provisions, uh, and it has a cooldown one. No reach. The reach doesn't really matter. You should play it on the melee row. Um, but the, the horde ability obviously isn't. Uh, on Pavco. So if you compare this to Pavco, it's the same thing, right? It's one provision more, but you get the profit one, so it's not a big deal. Um, and you have the bonus ability of if you have Horde 6, then you start doing two damage. Um, so it's strictly better than Pavco. However, with that being said, Pavco sees zero play, so that comparison doesn't really matter in terms of whether or not this card will be good, because, well, I mean, if Pavco sees zero play, why would this see any play? I mean, yeah, you get the extra one damage if you have Horde 6. How hard is it to hit Horde 6 consistently? Who knows? We'll see. Um, but I actually think it's better than that, and here's why. Uh, if you've watched the past videos or you've been paying attention to the cards, Syndicate has a lot of cards that want to be or don't want to be removed. You have a lot of high-priority engines slash value cards like the Flying Redania or Fence uh, that you really don't want your opponent to remove because, well, they're high value. So I think in a deck like that where you're playing a lot of high-value engines and like the Flying Redanian, you actually play this card because they can only remove so many cards and the more cards that you have that are muzzleable, uh, the less likely one of your other cards get muzzled. So I, I do think this card will see play in a heavy engine deck. Outside of a heavy engine deck, I don't think this card will see too much play. Um, you, you really just want this to be bait for other engines, um, and it does that quite well. Um, yeah. Outside of a heavy engine deck, I don't see it. Moving right along, we have the Syndicate Tutor card for the faction. Nine provisions, two strength, deploy melee, play crime from your deck. Um... Not much to talk about. Uh, it is a dwarf, for if you want to know that. Um, yeah, it's just like every other two to card in the game. It's nine provisions. Uh, this one's row locked. It's melee. Meno's range, so I don't know. Don't miss the row. Um, yeah, if there's a specific crime that you want to pull out, like uh, Novagrand's Justice, which we'll get to in a bit, um, or some other high-value crime card, and you want that consistency, then you play this card. If you don't care about that, then you don't play this card. Pretty straightforward. Not much to talk about. Next card, we have a leader. This is Cleaver. Order, play a special card from your deck with nine cost or lower. Increases value by one for every two crimes in your starting deck. So it's similar to Dana or Ardol in terms of uh, the ability being stronger if you add specific cards to your deck. So it says play a special card from your deck, uh, not play a crime card from your deck. This is important because... Well, I mean, uh, assuming you put in enough crime cards, you can be pulling out cards like Muzzle or Ragnarok or, well, I mean, Shoop is 13. If you can somehow get eight crime cards that are all different, uh, you can, in theory, play Cleaver into Shoop. That doesn't sound too bad. Uh, having Shoop 100% of the time, whenever you want, sounds pretty good. Um... Is that good enough to see play? Well, granted, it depends on how bad your deck becomes if you put in eight random crime cards. Uh, I mean, Shoop aside, I don't I don't think it's actually worth playing or making a deck around Shoop for this. You could, but like 50% of the time, you're just going to draw the Shoop naturally, in which case it's kind of meh. I think this is going to be better for something like Muzzle. Uh, or, I mean, you could even do it with Ragnarug. Um or maybe there's some combination of a crime card plus another card. Typically playing two cards in one turn is really good. I mean, that's kind of like cheating because the rules are you play one card a turn. Well, with leader, you can play two cards a turn. Um, so yeah, maybe there's some broken combination with a crime and another card. Who knows? We'll see. Um, do I think this leader will see play? Yes, I do. Um, if this was starting at like seven or something, it'd be much harder to hit cards like Muzzle or Ragnarok. Uh, but the fact that it's starting at nine, uh, getting to Muzzle, Muzzle's 12, so you'd have to play three, you'd have to play six crimes. I don't think that's going to be that hard. Playing six crimes is like, 
you find four bronzes that are good, uh, and there are definitely four good bronze crime cards. Uh, one of them is uh, we'll, we'll get to in a bit. Um, so pulling off to pull off or to pull out a twelve provision uh, special out of your deck is not going to be that hard to do. Uh, the shoop one might be a little more difficult. I don't even know if there are enough options, but regardless. This is a good leader. Um, I do think it will see play. Is this better than the other leader we saw? I don't know. Um, we've seen that muzzle is a really good card. So the fact that this can pull muzzle whenever you want seems pretty good. Um, yeah, I think it's a good leader. Uh, and the art on this card is awesome. So yes, very very much looking forward to this leader. Next card we have, um, actually, hold on. No, I wanna do this card first. And I'll go back to the, the leak card. So this card is five provisions, four strength, armor smith, uh, profit one, fee one, boost an ally by one. So you look at this and you get profit one. So it's a five for five. Well, that's terrible. Why on earth would you play a five for five? Well, it's not really a five for five. I mean, it is a five for five, um, but it's much more than that. So we discussed this the other day. Every now and then, or pretty often, you're going to have crowns attached to your leader and you're not going to be able to spend them. Uh, and spending your crowns is obviously very important because, well, if you don't spend your crowns, you're losing points because, well, you just points are being wasted uh, if you're not utilizing those crowns. Uh, and this is a card that is able to utilize those crowns. So if you have nine crowns at the end of the game, um, because, I don't know, maybe you played uh, the leader that gives your, uh, gives yourself nine crowns, you can play this card and blow all nine crowns super quickly. One, two, three, four, all the way to nine. Spend all of them. Great. Fantastic. Uh, now you didn't lose any points. Is the card itself like super flashy by itself? No, but in a syndicate deck, which is what you'll be playing this in, um, I think it's very important to have ways to spend your coins. And this is definitely one of the ways to do that. Um, notice there's no cooldown on this. So you can literally just hold on to this to the end of the game and then just spam out all your crowns. Here's the other really good thing about this card. You can play this early. Um, like we've discussed, you have a lot of cards that need to be removed. My guess is they're not going to spend removal on this. And if they're not spending removal on this, well, let's put this scenario up. Let's say you turn one this. Let's say your opponent doesn't do anything to it. Let's say the next card you play is this card. It has profit one. Now you use that one coin with the armor smith that I just showed and you boost this to six. Oh, look, you're out of muzzle range. And most cards don't do six damage, right? And you can apply this to any engine. Um, the Rolocked engine that's at five, the Resilience card, all, all these cards that are at five, all you gotta do is pump it over five, unless you're against Crocker Ethne, in which case you go up another, like six or seven. Uh, and then all of a sudden, these engines that are normally muzzleable are no longer, well, that, muzzleable. It's totally a word. Um, so yeah, I, I think this Armorsmith card is very, very good. Um, I think this is the type of card where it is actually auto-include because it is a easy way to spend your extra crowns. Uh, and I think that's very, very important. Um, unless there's a better card that does this, I would be very surprised if this card was not in most decks. Um, yeah, it's a good card. It's not super flashy. It's not getting seven for five value. It's not getting tremendous value, but it allows you to do what you want to do with your faction, which is spend coins. So I do think this card will see play, very much so. Uh, and the reason why I wanted to do this one first is because here's another card that is very similar, um, but more often than not is worse. So the other was a uh, five for five. This is also a five for five. Uh, the stats are a little different instead of getting profit one and having four strength. This has three strength and profit two. So in terms of like, I don't know, maybe you need to hit that nine profit mark. Uh, this is slightly better because it gets you there faster. It gets plus two, whereas the other is plus one. Um, with that being said, it's give an ally a unit vitality. So if you want to use it in the same way as Armorsmith, it's not going to work, right? If you have nine coins at the end of the game, uh, you can spam plus nine on one unit or multiple units. This card, you can give one unit plus nine vitality, but if that's your final play, you're getting plus one, right? However, let's say you're playing a swarm deck and you play this card. Uh, if you have nine units on the board and you give, I don't know, each of those nine units vitality plus one, uh, that's the equivalent to boost one because it happens at the end of your turn. Uh, so in that case, it's the same thing. Uh, how often will that happen? I don't know. Uh, outside of a swarm deck, maybe you only have three units. Uh, if you have nine crowns and you have to blow all of them, well, I mean, you can give it three units, three vitality each, but that takes three turns. 
And if it's your last play, well, you're losing a bunch of points. So, yeah. I, I think for the most part, this card is almost always worse. However, um, I do think this card might see a tiny bit of play. As I mentioned before, you do need cards to spend your points. And this is a card that spends points. It might not be the best finisher type of card, but you can play this early on into a round. You could use this to boost your engines. Um, I think you would be playing something like two armor smith and then maybe one of these. Uh, just because, you know it's going to be a terrible feeling if you get into a round and you have no way to spend coins and you're at nine coins and you're just sitting there and wasting nine points. And that's just going to feel terrible. Uh, so this adds consistency in terms of being able to spend your points. So um, I don't think it's better, but I do think it might see some play just because you're going to want cards that can spend points. And this is a card that does exactly that. So I think it'll see a tiny bit of play. I, I would be very surprised if they saw more play than Armor Smith. Um, but it might be coupled with it, maybe maybe two armor smith, one of these, as I said. Maybe you run two of these, because you just need anything that can spend coins, in which case this card's fine, because it does that. Uh, it's a little slower, but assuming you take that into account, uh, it shouldn't be a huge deal. So, eh, it's an okay card. It will see some play. Moving on, we have Swindle. This card is four provisions. This is a pretty controversial card. So, Pickpocket, if you don't remember, is a gold card that was released on day one. Um, it is six provisions and it's profit six. This is four provisions and is profit a random amount between four and six. So in terms of what you get for what you pay, this is always better, right? Uh, pickpocket is six for six. This is minimum four for four. 33% of the time it's five for four. 33% of the time it's six for four. So 66% of the time, this card is better than pickpocket. Yeah. This card's insanely good, uh, like auto include good. You're going to be playing this card, assuming you want to gain coins, which most likely you do because that's kind of the whole idea of Syndicate. Uh, you're going to be playing this card. Now, some people say, well, why on earth would you play Pickpocket? This is always better. Just never play Pickpocket. Well, I think you just play both. I think you play two of these and Pickpocket. Here's why. Uh, the scenarios where Pickpocket is better is when Horde comes into play. Let's say you're playing a Flying Redania deck. Let's say you gain three coins uh, by one of the crime cards, and you need to gain those six other coins to pull out your Flying Redania. Um, this will only get those six coins 33% of the time, whereas Pickpocket does it 100% of the time. So if you need to hit that, that, that magic number of six, uh, Pickpocket is going to be better because it does 100% of the time. Um, but uh, assuming you don't need to hit that exact mark for Horde, this card is going to be good. Uh, it's just not guaranteed to hit the sick. So um, I think you have both. And when you do need the guaranteed six, you'll play the pickpocket. Otherwise, more often than not, if you're just looking to gain some crowns uh, for the future or for a couple turns later, uh, you play this card and you save the pickpocket for when you really do need it. Um, is this card good? Yes. This card is auto include. Um, yeah. Some people were saying maybe there should be, maybe it should be something like uh, Horde 5, gain 5 coins, and then if you don't want to, if you don't have Horde, then it's like a 50-50 between 4 and 6 or something. Um, yeah, I guess there's ways to make it so not so it's not super RNG, but I mean, yeah, I, I don't know how I feel about this card. Maybe it should be 4 and 5, 6, the, the fact that there's a 6 provision card and there's a four provision cards and 33% of the time they're the same card. I don't really like that. Maybe pickpocket should be seven profit instead of six. Maybe. I'm not sure. Um, it, it's all going to come down to play testing. Uh, it might just be you need both, in which case I guess I'm okay with it. Uh, if you don't need both, then you just always play this. So uh, very good card. Auto include in every syndicate deck. Yeah. Moving right along, uh, we have a cute little boar. This card is eight provisions. Five strength, intimidate two, uh, tribute four, gain immune. So for those of you who may have forgotten what intimidate is, it's similar to harmony and thrive. Basically, whenever you play a crime card, you boost the unit by plus one. But this is intimidate two. So whenever you play a crime card, it's plus two. Um, yeah, that's kind of cool. Uh, and if you play tribute four, once again, remember, uh, this is when you play the card. It's essentially a deploy. You either have to pay the tribute when you play it or you don't. So you can't do it later on. Uh, so when you play this, you'll have the option to spend four uh, crowns. If you do so, you'll gain immunity. Is immunity good? Yes, immunity is very strong, especially on an engine. 
So this is kind of similar to Milva in that it's, you know, it's an immune engine that gets plus value every time you play a specific card. Um, it's a little better because it gains a little more. Uh, granted, the condition's a little harder to meet. Uh, Intimidate versus uh, Milva is any square tall unit, whereas this is specifically a crime card. Now, when you look at this card, you might think, okay, I'm scared. Uh, this is pushing a no unit type of deck, uh, and it's going to break the game, and this card's going to be crazy. Um, maybe, perhaps, but what you have to remember is if you look at most of the crime cards, most of them have crowns attached to it. You're profiting in some amount of crowns, so you have to spend them, uh, and most of them are ways of putting units on the board or boosting something, which means you ha need to have other units or you're putting other units on the board. So while you might be playing this card and your opponent can't interact with it, all the other cards that you're playing, your opponent's probably going to be interacting with. So... Yeah, I, I think it's an okay card. I mean, Tribute 4 is pretty expensive. Uh, this is roughly a 5-point immune card for 12 provisions. It's, it's kind of expensive. Um, will I, will this card see play? Yeah, it'll see play. People will try to play no unit decks. I don't think it'll be very good. And if it is very good, you play COC and you auto-win the matchup 100% of the time because all their points are going to be into one card. Um, yeah. We'll see. We'll see. Um, yeah, it's cute. I, I don't think it's like auto included in any deck. You need to be playing a lot of crime cards for this card. So you, you have to very much be building a deck around this. And I think some people will try. I don't think it'll work out very well, but eh, who knows? Uh, hopefully I'm not wrong on this. I don't want no unit decks to be a, th a big popular thing. So uh, I guess we'll have to wait and see. But uh, yeah, it's a pretty decent card. Moving right along, we did the armor smith already. Uh, so this is the card, actually, we're going to come back to this. This is the card I revealed today, but we're going to come back to this. I want to do this card first, and you'll understand why in a second. Uh, this is a dwarf. This is a dual card with Squiatel. It is five provisions, five strength, and it has shield. So this card's really good. Like, really, really, really good uh, for a number of different reasons. It doesn't seem very good. It's a five for five. Why on earth would you play a five for five? That doesn't seem very good, pumpkin. Well, uh, <laughs> so... In Squiatel right now, I've dropped Volunteers for most of my list because they brick so often, and there's really not a lot of cards to, like, dump them with. So, like, if you play Volunteers, your opponent just kills it. If you play a Skirmisher, they just kill it because they're super-duper weak. Killing it, too, is, like, a lot of cards have Death Blow, too. So, like, you're typically giving your opponents extra value when you're playing one of those two cards. Um, so a lot of the times, Volunteers brick. Usually the only time you're playing out Volunteers consistently is with something like Gabor in round 3. But if you're playing Volunteers in round 3, then you're not getting the thinning, which means your mulligans are worse in round 3. It's just, I don't like it. I hate it. If I'm playing a thin card, I want to thin out in round 1 or 2. I don't want to be thinning in round 3 because the thinning is useless in round 3. Anyways, all that aside, uh, this is a great proactive dwarf. Uh, your opponent's not going to be able to kill it unless they muzzle it. But if they muzzle this, it means they're not muzzling Gabor, so you're happy. Uh, so you play this, your opponent does something, and then bam, you get volunteers out. Awesome. Great. Uh, it's also a good agitator buff. So when you're playing agitator, if you don't draw skags, uh, typically your options are terrible. Uh, usually you hold on to it or you mulligan it. In some cases, I actually mulligan agitators away because if I don't have skags, I don't want to boost anything. Boosting a skirmisher feels terrible because you want to mulligan it. Uh, and boosting volunteers is terrible because you should be playing them to thin them out. So, like, your options are Skags and Gabor. But if you're playing it on Gabor, you're losing carryover. It's just, it's frustrating, right? This card solves all of that, right? Boosting this is fine. I don't mind boosting this. It even has a shield if your opponent wants to try to damage it. I love boosting this. I mean, boosting Skags is better, but this is a plan B, and that's never bad. Um, now, the shield aspect... A lot of people go, well, shield's useless. Shield is typically used with engines because engines don't want to die. Shield gives extra protection. Why on earth would you want a shield on this? Well, the shield is like invisible stats. Um, typically, this card is actually going to be something like a 6 for 5 or a 7 for 5 in some cases. And that's really, really good. So the reason why it's going to be that is because there's a lot of random pings in the game. If you've ever played against SK, there's Marauders, there's Herald Pings, or sorry, Herald Skull Pings, there's the Herald Leader, which randomly pings. Um, so all of those are blocking one or two damage. There's Crushing Trap, there's Lacerate, there's Sabrina in Northern Realms, there's Tritum Infantry in Northern Realms. Um, yeah, there's just cards that do random pings. Uh, the fact that this, like, 
blocks this off against Lacerate and Crushing Trap, Dragon Stream 2, I guess, if you really want to. Um, Regis for a tick. Right? There, there's a ton of cards that do AoE damage or random pings, and Shield blocks one to two, and in some cases three for Dragon Stream, uh, damage. That's a lot. That's good. Now, it's invisible points in the sense that when you play this card, it's not a seven for five, but it'll block some damage, and so it effectively gets seven for five, and that's where the shield is very deceiving. Uh, this card's really, really good. Um, like, auto-include good. You will be playing this in every deck that plays the next card that we're about to show. Um, yeah, this card's really good. It's a dwarf, and the reason why that's important is because of this next card, Novagrand's Justice. This card's 11 provision. This is a crime card for both Scoia'tael and Syndicate. Play a bronze unit from your deck. If it's a dwarf, spawn and summon his copy on the same row. Okay, so this there's a lot of things going on with this card. One, if you play it with the other card, you get two of them, right? So if you play this, you can get two of these on the board in one turn. Is that good? Yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, two of a very strong dwarf is not bad. Uh, it's also a proactive play, and if you read the text, it does thin a card. So if you play this on turn one, you do thin a card out of your deck, and thinning is never a bad thing with, well, any faction. Thinning is great. Uh, so if you play this in turn one, or, or round one, or round two, you're getting thinning. Um, otherwise, it's just a high point play. 10 for 11 is good, and as I just mentioned, some for, for the most part, those dwarves are going to be getting six, sometimes even seven value. So really, you're looking at like a 12 to 14 value for this. Is that good? Yeah, that's really good. Um, not to mention it pulling out a dwarf, which means it's good with volunteers. It's also really good in an all dwarf deck. Uh, in an all dwarf deck, cards like Zoltan or Barclay, all you want is more dwarves. And this does that. It adds an extra dwarf. So the more the merrier. Uh, it's more points for Oak. It's just a really good card. Um, I do want to point out that if you boost the dwarf, right? So let's say you have the dwarf that I just showed. You play Ithlan, you boost it to nine. You mulligan away into your deck and you play this and pull that card out. It will pull the boosted card out, um, but the next one is a copy, a base copy of that card. So you will get a five strength dwarf with shield. Um, you do not get an enhanced boosted dwarf. Otherwise, this card would be absolutely insane. Um also note, this is a crime card, which means if you play this in Dana, it counts as another tag. And before, you were only able to get up to 12. Well, with this card, you can get to 13. Uh, why is that significant? Well, there's two cards that are Scoia'tael that are 13 provisions that you normally were not able to pull out, no matter how skewed you made your deck. You can now pull out Oak or Gambit uh, if you run this card in your deck. Granted, the rest of your deck is kind of meh. Um, the tactic slots are pretty bad. You can play Council or Waylay. Uh, you do have to play the Alchemy Runestone, which is pretty bad, but if you really want that 13, if you really want that consistency with Ochre Gambit, you can do it. I don't think it's a good idea. I, I wouldn't suggest it, but you can do it if you so choose to. Um, yeah, it's a really good card. This card's going to see a lot of play. I feel like there's something else I wanted to mention with this card, but oh yes, there's another card. So, um, the, the best, as I said, was to pull out the, the five strength unit with uh, the shield because it doesn't really, it, it's summon, so you're not getting the deploy effect on the second dwarf. However, you can play this with defenders. You can play this, pull out two defenders, and then use Bruver and buff both defenders up to six, and then they will immediately start ticking. So you can, with Bruver, get two defenders ticking in one turn. Is that good? Yeah, that's good. That's like similar to Hensel in that you can get two engines going and your opponent typically cannot remove both in one turn. With that being said, cards like Gigni or Scorch do very well against this combo because they're going to be aligned. They're going to be the same uh, number. Um, so if people are running Scorch or Gigni, it's a terrible combo, but the odds of people running Scorch or Gigni are pretty low. Um, so yeah, you could play that combo if you wanted. Um, I'd also like to say when you do play this card, it's not random. You don't randomly pull out a dwarf out of your deck. Uh, when you play this card, it shows every bronze card or every bronze unit in your deck and you get to choose which one you want. So it's not random. Uh, you, you get exactly what you want when you want. Uh, there's no randomness on this card. Yeah, this card is really, really good. I'm really excited for this card. I will be playing it 100% in Athne. It's really, really good. Uh, I, I look forward to playing Volunteers again because I can actually start playing the card because of uh, the Muscle Dwarf that I showed prior to this. Um, uh, I, I guess I should throw this in. 
In Syndicate, they have a new dwarf. I believe it's four provisions, four strength, and it has Intimidate. So in theory, if you play this plus this, you can pull off a Fav Water combo. Uh, Fav pulls water. This would pull uh, Justice that I just showed plus two um, dwarfs, the, the four strength dwarfs that have Intimidate. And then you can make like a Fav Water-esque combo. Is that good? Eh, probably not, but it is there if you really want, if you're making a crime heavy deck, that's kind of cool. Um, but yeah, I, I think the majority of the time you're going to be using justice on uh, this card right here. Yeah, let me know what you guys think. Uh, I am really excited for Squatel. They're, they're getting these two cards are really, really good. I am definitely playing the, both of these cards uh, in every Athene deck. Probably most Brewer decks, and you could play it in Francesca. It doesn't sound very good. You could play it in Philavandro, which doesn't sound very good. You could play it. Uh, I would not play this in Eldane. Um, yeah, this combo is really good. It's just, it's just good. I, I it's good. Uh, you, you'll have to take my word for it. Uh, you're gonna see this a lot. Uh, now, is this combo good in Syndicate? Yeah, it is. Playing 10 points with two shields, thin one for 11, sign me up. I Like, this is this is insane. This is auto-include to the extent of Totem and SK. Totem in, is in every single SK deck. This combo is probably going to be in most Squayatel decks that can run it, um, that don't get, like, hindered by it, like Eldane or Philavandral. Uh, yeah, it's just it's really, really good. Oh, I forgot to mention, auto-include in Dana, too. Uh, because it is a crime card and because it's a good card. It's a good finisher. It's a good proactive play. It's just, it's just a really good combo. Uh, yes, I, I mean, if you can't tell already, I'm very excited about these two cards and I can't wait to use them on the 28th. Let me know what you guys think about these cards and I'll see you guys on the next video. Thanks for watching.